we have magnitudes, we have normalization, we have the dot product, we have a whole bunch of new vector math thrown at us. We haven't done any coding, but I want to refresh you as to our end goal. If I have one vector like so and another vector like so, I want to use the dot product to say, hey, if I had a big fat flashlight way up high in the sky, maybe the sun. Okay, you can think of the sun way high in the sky. And it's shooting its rays down like so. They're coming down from the sky. What kind of shadow would this first vector project onto the second vector? So here's the shadow. I'll even do it in a shadow color. All right, so what piece of this vector is going along this second vector? We want to know, we call this the projection of one vector onto another. We want to know what that vector is. And then uh, here's here's the second vector. These two vectors uh, added together would actually make this vector here. And I, I know I've kind of drawn this. It looks like it's on the x-axis. If I drew an x-axis across the screen like so, let's say that's x and, and this is y. This looks like it's parallel. This bottom vector looks like it's parallel to x. And for now, you can think of it that way. But I, I, what I'm about to show you will give us a very general case. Our vectors don't necessarily need to be lined up real nice like so. Say we had one vector going this direction and another vector going that direction. And I wanted to project the second vector onto the first and get its shadow like so. Here's another shadow. Well, then then using the dot products, we could do that. Or maybe I want to project this little small vector onto the bigger vector. Okay, and here you can see this is this is perpendicular there, and this is perpendicular here, and so, so there's the projection of the small vector onto the large vector. Now let me let me show you a little tool I have handy here. This looks a lot like other tools I've shown you. Basically, I have two vectors here. I have this blue one, okay, hidden by the red one there, but there's this blue vector here, and that's re represented by this x and this y component, or more mathematically, it's the ith and jth component. And then I have here the second vector whose ith and jth components are right here. So I can slide these sliders around and you'll see I can uh, adjust these two vectors. And sure enough, you can see this red vector is the projection of the second vector here onto the first. Okay, we'll even label these. This will be vector A. All right, this is vector A, and this will be vector B. You can see I kind of try to do angle brackets there, but vector B. All right, so this red vector is the projection of vector B onto vector A, like so. And as I go around and adjust B, you can see the projection, the red vector is the projection. It adjusts accordingly. In fact, you can see we even can project past A but we're still projecting, we're casting our shadow onto the second vector. Now watch, I can swap the projection order. In fact, let me just bring this back in. When I click on here and say, instead of projecting B onto A, let's project A onto B. So when I click this, how is the diagram going to change? I highly encourage you to uh, pause the video and, and think about that before watching me do it. Here we go. There you go, now we can see the shadow of A onto B, and I can change B around, and you see the shadow adjusts accordingly. No big deal. Now what happens if we go negative? All right, let's take A, let's take A negative here. Watch that projection. The projection is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but now there you go. All right, the projection is negative. Did you see that? And again, remember there's a cosine theta in there, the magnitude of A, magnitude of B times cosine theta here. So this is where theta would go negative. Okay, and we'll, we'll we'll see that very shortly. But theta is positive there. You see our our angle here, theta. All right, that's theta. That wasn't a very good sweep, was it? Let me try it again. Theta. Okay, theta. It's 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 less than 90 degrees, so the cosine of theta is positive. But then once we take a negative, you know, right there, it's about 90 degrees. Right there, it's about 90 degrees. Our theta or pi over two, sorry, I should be more correct. Pi over two, but now the cosine will go negative, and sure enough, here's the negative cosine. So there you go, there's there's the dot product and projection. I can 
swap which way I'm projecting. No big deal, whichever way I want to go. But, but you may be thinking, Jamie, this is so trivial. Why would you want to learn this and do this? And Well, <laughs> in games, especially physics and graphics, we use the dot product a lot. So we'll, we'll continue on with this idea and actually show you how to do use the dot product. That's all I'm doing in my code behind this this GUI here is using the dot product to project one vector onto the other.